why and he was like huh you know and that's <laughs> so that's some of my that's some of my stuff but after i got into the word of god and i started to understand about the word of god and understand about serving and i and and the person who the person who's really uh the person who's really winning is the person who can serve the most in a marriage, you know? And so now I can't say that I have arrived. You know, I, every day is a day of crucifying my flesh, okay? I have, and if, if a woman goes to a man and she's like, oh, you're my everything. I remember telling my husband, oh, you know, I remember telling him, I just love your mind. Oh, I just love your mind. That's what I told him when we first was married because I felt like my husband was very wise and, you know, he was very articulate and all of that kind of stuff. So, but then after a while, I was like, gotten in this word and you, God, I love your mind. God, I love your word. Okay. So I start to see when you go in the word of God, you start to see where you both need help. You need to come to the word, submit to God. I start to understand that. Yes, I need help. I couldn't go to this man. It's like, oh, you're my, you're, you're my everything. You know, you can't, a woman, if you're going to your man and you're treating him like, oh, you're my everything. You're everything to me. Oh, this and this and this. No, girl. God is your everything. You don't worship your husband. My husband's like, Sarah call, Sarah call Abraham Lord. Yeah, she did. She did. Okay. She did. Okay. So Christ inside of my husband. I respect and I honor the grace of God and the anointing on my husband's life. I thank God for him. He's a blessed man of God. He is a blessed man of God. And I understand now that when I do things um, that's outside of this word, I'm out of order. If he would do something out of this, out, from outside of this word, he's out of order. Okay, you see what I'm saying? So now... We come together in, instead of before when we first was married, it was a lot of this going back and forth. It was, oh no, you didn't. Woo, 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 woo. Ah, bah, bah, bah. You know, it was a lot. And, and so because I was like, I felt like I was being molded, like trying to make me be who he wanted me to be. Like, you know, some of the people maybe he grew up with, like his, in his family or whatever. But then I still like some of the spunkiness and I like the, you know, I like still like some of the things the way my mom, you know, I'm not one to go sit in the corner and just, you know, sit there and just, ooh. You know, it's, you know, you know, you have to be able to express yourself. And I am different. I am a peculiar treasure. I am God's daughter. So all of that had to be in line. I can't be disrespectful to my husband. You know, I don't use, you know, I tr I don't use uh, vulgar language. I'm not for that. So in that video is a bunch of vulgar language going for it. I'm not for that. I think you can be very, uh, you can be very respectful and you can express yourself without using vocal language. You know, there are some people who do it. It's not like I never heard it before, you know, but I feel like you can't express, your, express yourself without getting on that level. I have, my challenge has been to be loud. I have been loud before, you know, because I like to express myself and when I, and his voice is very deep and my husband's voice is very deep. And so I felt like, and my voice was like, you know, you have to have your voice in a marriage, but you have to be respectful and you have to honor. And so after, like I said, 26 years of marriage, you come to the point where you know and you're able, you come to the mirror of God's word and you can see where I was wrong on a whole lot of things. I, I was wrong. Okay. And so when I look at my children, my daughters, they are one who would express themselves. I have one daughter who's married. She, my prayer when I, when, when I was younger, like I said this before on another broadcast, I remember saying to my mom before, cause my mom would pop you. You said something out of order, you pop, you gonna get popped. You don't be, you know, you're not gonna say anything out of order to my mom cause she would get you, rest our soul. Okay, and so my cousins, they would laugh, you know, we would laugh. My auntie was the same way. You don't do that. It was like, Yes, ma'am, or mm-hmm. You know, you you didn't have a a talk back voice, you know, to say to express yourself. So I remember saying to my mom, when I have children, I you know I want them to be able to express themselves with not being uh you know scared they're gonna get popped. You know, it wasn't abuse. It was just like you be quiet. This grown folks grown folks conversation stay in a child's place. I know y'all heard that too. <laughs> So 
anyway, yeah, so my daughter, my da oldest daughter, she's married now. So God bless. We pray for her as well because when you, she just recently married, you know, she's been married for a, a couple of years. So when you get married, women, when you like to run your mouth, you know, you like to run your mouth, there's an order, you know, because if you submit to your husband as unto the Lord, you're not going to be disrespectful to God. You're not going to be disrespectful to God. You're going to respect, you have to respect the man's uh, place and position. You know, that's a position that God has given him. So you can still get some, you know, you can still get your way in a way that um, if it's beneficial for the family, it's just that you have to do it in love. And when I first was married, it was when I first was, when we first were married, it was like, oh, let me tell you, you, you know, this, this, is this, and this. You can let them say what they have to say and then there's a time for you to say what you have to say in love and then if he, if they're not seeing it the way you're seeing it then you can you can pray and then God can show it and illuminate it so they can see it okay and so they can see it and then it can be respectful so get yourself together read read the bible read books that are inspired by god that teach teach you how to be a wife before you say i do same thing for men because men i am so tired of hearing this thing by men are visual men are visual that does not give you a pass to um to be a a, a, a cheater that doesn't give you a pass to look at women. That doesn't give you a pass to cheat on your wife. That doesn't give you a pass. You walk in the righteousness of God and you love your wife like Christ loved the church. And I'm not, you know, I'm not for this in the black community to try to make it, you know, that it's okay. You know, I heard this teaching about how, how, uh, uh, in the slavery days that the black men had to go from cabin to cabin to go and make all these uh babies you know and and that kind of carried over and that's where the mindset i heard this teaching i forgot who got you know god bless i forgot who who was teaching this and they were saying well this is where it came shut up that's your flesh crucify your flesh crucify your flesh it does not give you a right to go from woman to woman Okay, that does not give you so is you know, I'm not to picking on the black race and saying that that's only in the black race. I'm just saying it doesn't give some of the songs out there encourage cheating. Some of the songs out there encourage harmongering. Some of the songs out there encourage adultery. You know, that's what I'm saying. Submit to God, resist the devil and he will flee. That doesn't give you a right to be a cheater. I'm not going to sit around in a pity party with a whole bunch of other black women after seeing and hearing this Lemonade album. And like, oh, really? Misery loves company. You know, Misery wants to say, oh, really? You was treated like that? Oh, I was treated. And you both like, hmm, look what I went through. And you, oh, look what I look, went through. No. Mm -mm. That doesn't give you a pass to be disrespectful in your marriage. The man, the demand what god says in your marriage okay demand what the word of god says in your marriage and you will have a blessed marriage you will have a blessed union at, at the end of the day love one another love one another that's all that covers everything that covers the whole marriage love one another and and pastor Hagee, god bless him he used an example about two potatoes he says when you have two potatoes one potato and then another potato it just looks like two potatoes when you get married you go through that that peeling process you put those potatoes in some in that hot place it boils it boils yeah I, yeah, I'm gonna read your comments more so when, when it's over. So, yeah, so you put that in the hot situation, it boils, and then all of a sudden you have some good mashed potatoes, but you can't see where that other potato was one and that potato was one. You see a, just some mashed potatoes came together as one. And that's a beautiful marriage. That's, you know, being compatible in a marriage. That marriage is beautiful. I love being married. I, I, I love being married. Are we there yet? Every day is a journey. 
even after all these years of marriage every day is a journey but i love the union of marriage because that's the way god commanded it and so i pray for women who are believing god for a husband and i pray for for men who are believing god for a wife come together in in the way god says it's supposed to be don't be fooled by the world the world would have you go into hell the world will have you saying that it's okay for a whole bunch of craziness but that is not god's will god says a man and a woman and you come together in a union loving god loving god and loving one another god loving us first the expectation should be on god and not on one another to be happy to be happy I will frustrate if my, I like I said I need to help if I went to my husband, oh help me help me help me oh be everything to me he'd be like girl what's wrong with you you know <laughs> go pray go to your prayer closet I'm not your God you know go to your prayer closet go go you know you can't go to your husband be like oh be my everything Call my nurse, be my everything. What a frustrating thing to be that, you know? And that's, you know, no. And so now it's like, God is my everything. You know, God is my everything. And so that's a beautiful place. But if you, you sitting there looking at your husband like this all the time, just, oh, you know, just all the time, you know, God is a jealous God, you know, God wants that praise, honey. God wants you to look at him like that. God wants you to, to see him, see him like that. And then you seek the kingdom of God, his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. And then your husband and you can have a beautiful marriage because you're not trying to be God for him. And, and, and he's not trying to be God for you. You both go to God. And a prayerful marriage. Pray together. I love my husband. I love him. I thank God for him. He's an awesome man of God. But he's not my God. Okay? And so I guess Beyonce came to that conclusion to know that her husband is not her God. I know he want to call himself, giving himself a name similar to God. But he's not her God. And I'm sure, you know, with the song, like I said, I don't know if it's publicity or if it's, you know, something going on today. But I pray for our marriage. I pray that it works because God hates divorce. So that has been our scope today. I hope you were blessed. And I just pray if you're single out there, you are in a blessed position. Let God work on you. You get together. You 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 go to God and you pray about everything that you would desire your husband to do to be and you pray about everything that you would desire to be for your husband and just know that you both you both have a love language don't frustrate one another trying to be you know you have a love language i like that because you i, I you know i've studied that about the love language you you have a love language okay so you know don't frustrate your spouse trying to the expectations on them to be something they're not you know, get it from God. Get everything you need from God. And then you have a blessed union and you'll be together and it'll be great, right? It'll be great. So bless, blessings to your marriage, grace and peace to your marriage. In your single stay, God's wisdom be with you. Spirit of wisdom, revelation, and understanding when you're selecting. And if you're comfortable being just single, that is a ministry as well. Just be about God's business and have a great life. You have a great life in God. Okay, so God bless you. Thanks for sitting here and having having this time. Oh, I oh God to God be the glory. I'm, I'm glad you stopped by and, and came in, and I appreciate you sitting with me. So to God be all the glory. We had a time, but God to God be all the glory. I love you and have a great and awesome day. And just know. I love Beyonce. You know, that girl, she's from Houston, too, and that's where I grew up. I love her. I know, you know, with me being a Christian and I love God's, uh, you know, some of the songs out there I don't endorse. It's just something about her. I just, I just, you know, some of the songs I don't endorse, some of the, you know, some of that I don't, I'm not for. But I think that girl is a really gifted young lady. She is gifted. She is talented. She's beautiful. And I just know that God is not through with her yet. God is not through with her yet. And so I pray blessings to her and I and, and God bless her beautiful baby. 
I just think she's really a blessed woman. Okay, so this is no shade at all. God bless that husband of hers in the name of Jesus. Yep, that's all I'm going to say about that. So, but anyway, God bless and have a great day. Jesus loves you and he's with you forever. He is with you. He said, I will never leave you or forsake you. So have a great and awesome day. Mm -hmm.